Tonight, he came up with Obama's America, and now he has Hillary's America. For the next hour, I will be with Dinesh D'Souza. So get ready, because it's all unfiltered. Hello, I'm Dennis Michael Lynch, and I thank you for joining me this evening. There will be no DML report tonight because I have Dinesh D'Souza here with me for the next hour. We are going to be talking about his new film called Hillary's America. We all know how successful Obama's America was. Dinesh D'Souza tonight is going to tell us about what we are in for if Hillary Clinton is elected president. That being said, Dinesh, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. I want to do this a little backward. I want to talk about Obama's America. And the reason being is because I think it's critically important for people to realize how much you are in the know. I just watched, uh, by chance, your film again, Obama's America, not more than a couple weeks ago. And watching it for the second time, it's astonishing how right your predictions have come out to be. For a long time, I sat between the two graves and wept. The pain I felt was my father's pain. My questions were my brother's questions. Their struggle, my birthright. Obama has a dream, a dream from his father, that the sins of colonialism be set right and America be downsized. It's been a long time coming, but tonight, because of what we did on this day, in this election, at this defining moment, change has come to America. America has a dream from our founding fathers that together we must perfect liberty and America must grow so liberty grows. Which dream will we carry? into 2016. So when you look back at what you saw in 2012 when you made that film, and you look today at the way America is, of all the predictions you made, which ones are most troubling to you that have come true? Well, in, the, in that movie, we tried to get to the soul of Obama, to kind of get to how he thinks about the world. and. Um, I identified his ideology as anti-colonial, as something derived from his father. The notion that America is a force for oppression in the world. This is what Obama believes. And as consequently, he views his job as one of shrinking America's power and influence. Now out of that came several predictions. One was that Obama would continue to be a big spender, in a sense eroding our national treasure, doubling the national debt. That has happened. Number two, Obama would try to colonize uh, industries of the private sector, bring them under the rod of government control. We've seen that happen in healthcare, in finance, with banks, insurance companies. Uh, Obama will undermine our allies and help our enemies. This is a wild prediction because you elect a president to protect America's interests. But you can just look clinically around the world. Our allies, Mubarak in Egypt, he's gone. Uh, Gaddafi wasn't an ally, but he was working with us. Uh, since the Iraq war, he's gone. Our enemies, Assad in Syria, he's fully in power. The mullahs in Iran, they're stronger than ever. So it is simply uh, empirically verifiable that Obama has actually achieved this result. ISIS did not really exist. Obama and Hillary come in, now we have ISIS. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and we also said that the Muslims will begin to start creating this transnational, I called it the United States of Islam. Yeah. Uh, and if you look at uh, ISIS, the Islamic State in Iraq and Syria, uh, it's very clear that they are not only consolidating but bringing the battle to us here. 
Um, so I think Obama, in a way, this uh, demented man can be proud of his legacy. He said he would transform America, and he has, and he has transformed it in the direction that we said he would. So I feel very, I don't know if I'm proud to be vindicated because these are bad things to happen to America. I would rather have been proven wrong. Right. Uh, but I'm glad to see I made a film that called Obama right. Well, one of the things that you said in the film, which I talk about here on the show all the time, is the fact that although he never met his father, he's influenced by his father, right? So when you describe, when, when, when you take a look at that, do you see any sort of person in Hillary's life that has that same sort of influence? <clears throat> in Hillary's life, I think it would have to be Alinsky. Now, an interesting thing about Alinsky is that conservatives tend to focus on the radical Alinsky. Alinsky wrote a book, Rules for Radicals. He's got all these recipes and so on for political activism. And that's one side of Alinsky, and it's a le legitimate side. Ben Carson was alluding to that side when he talked about Alinsky dedicating his book to Lucifer. Um, but in the movie, the new movie, Hillary's America, mm -hmm. we focus on another side of Alinsky, which Alinsky himself talked about in the last year of his life. Alinsky talked about the fact that he was basically a thief and a gangster, uh, kind of a mafia guy. Alinsky was a petty thief on the streets of Chicago. Then he got to the University of Chicago and he developed a kind of a, <clears throat> you must almost call it a thievery scheme. Um, to eat free in the cafeteria. Now, you know, I can see some poor slum kid figuring out a way to eat free, but Alinsky would have seminars on the topic. He'd put up signs, come, you know, come and learn the Alinsky method for eating free without paying. And so you can almost see the beginning of community organizing occurring right there. This guy Alinsky is organizing ways to rip off the university. Later he gets in with the Al Capone gang. He uh, admires their extortionist rackets. He doesn't like the fact that gangsters sometimes get knocked off. So he thinks, I'll take these ideas to politics. In politics, I can pull off extortion a la Jesse Jackson, but I won't get knocked off. And it's kind of amazing to think that Obama and Hillary are both influenced by this guy, uh, who's obviously a thief and, um, and a bit of a mobster. When, when you, let's go back to Obama for a second. When you watch him absolutely, completely ignore for so long uh, the rule of law. And then you see now what's going on with the cops and how it is that Black Lives Matter is not only emerging, but all, he fuels them. What, what inside him is driving that? Because to the rest of us, we look at this and say, why are, you, why are you supporting these people? And he continues to do so. Now, Obama is different than Hillary, I believe, even though they have Alinsky in common. And Alinsky was sort of a mentor to both. Now, Obama didn't know Alinsky personally, but he studied with the Alinskyites. Hillary knew Al Alinsky in person. But the difference between Obama and Hillary is that Obama is fueled, I think, ultimately by ideological hatred. For Obama, he looks at America and he goes, you know, how, da how dare they? Not how dare we, but how they're they. Meaning here's America, they have 5% of the world's population, but Americans enjoy 20% of the world's resources. America has 5% of the world's oil, but we use 25% of the world's oil. So he's thinking, this is unjust. These Americans are ripping off the rest of the world. It's my job, the great Obama, to set the ship of the world right side up. And that means diminishing America's power so that the other countries, Brazil, China, Russia, India, can come up. So I think Obama sees this as his, you may say, perverted destiny. Now with Hillary, it's not about ideology. Uh, it's about the Clintons, this Bonnie and Clyde, it's a racket. And these two have been running this tag team show since the Arkansas days. Uh, it's all about them. They're sort of brokers of public policy, which is to say that they figure out how to do public policy and keep 10%. Uh, and they do this with domestic policy, they do it with foreign policy. Uh, and so uh, 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 Hillary's America, I think, is going to be a more gangsterish place. Uh, now, with before we get there, before we get there, um, because we're going to talk about that in the next segment. If, Oba if Hillary wins, and we have about a minute, what sort of role, if any, do you think Obama will play in her presidency? I think Obama, there's the only place for him to go from here uh, is to become, in a sense, what he would see as the conscience of the world. Now, this is all pure grand delusion and posturing. He's actually a very petty man. He's a narcissistic guy. His favorite position is to look in the mirror. He's not the conscience of anything in reality. Um, 
Well, he's a lot like his dad. His father had the same uh, warped delusions. His father thought he was a super important guy. The future of Kenya depended on him. Complete nonsense. Um, but Obama's the same. He, he lives in his own world. Um, and I think he wants to be, if you will, even higher than the President of the United States. You may call him sort of the, the grand poobah of the universe, uh, looking down on the rest of us and telling us what to do. He loved to play that role. I think he will actually lapse into largely into irrelevance. Uh, but that's what he'd like. All right, when we come back, we're going to be focusing in on the new movie and Hillary Rodden Clinton. What, what, what will Hillary's America look like? While Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State, the Clintons took hundreds of millions of dollars from foreign entities. Shame on you! Shame on you! She looked very menacing. I was really frightened. I didn't see any reason to keep them. The fact is, we have four dead Americans. What difference at this point does it make? 